Hi, everybody. Today we're going to talk about the um, infancy social emotional development in chapter seven. So we're going to start with factor of fiction. Number one, infant's fear as expressed in stranger wariness signals as abnormal behavior. This is actually not true. They should eventually learn who is familiar or not familiar, and they are going to express stranger wariness. Number two, in part, because of inborn temperamental characteristics, some children are more difficult to raise and harder to live with. This is actually true, and if you have uh, multiple children, you might have experienced that yourself. Number three, attachment patterns established in infancy almost never change. This is not true. And number four, high quality daycare, even during the infant's first year, does not lead to negative developmental outcomes. And this is a true fact because a lot of people sometimes fear um, daycare and its effects on children. And the issue, the question determining factor is quality. Culture and experience influence the norms of development. And this is especially true for emotional development after the first eight months. For examples, parents encourage pride in North American toddlers saying you did it yourself even when that's untrue. But Asian families discourage pride and cultivate modesty and shame. Stranger wariness becomes evident when the infant no longer smiles at a friendly face and cries if that face moves too closely too quickly. Right here you'll see that when we can start seeing happy and content infants, this is when they are uh, social smile. And let's see if this video will work. See the fearful face and pride and shame. Being self-aware involves an individual knowing that his or her body, mind, and actions are separate from those of other people. Very young infants have no sense of self. As most people define it, at about five months, the sense of self hatches and begins to emerge and develop. And this ruse test is a classic experiment. It's performed with babies between ages 9 to 24 months. And what they do is they look to see how the, if they put the pink dot on the baby's nose and the baby's looking in the mirror and just keeps looking at the other child, while as when the baby's 20 months, they'll look in the mirror and touch their own nose, realizing the ruse is on their nose. Temperament originates in genes and prenatal development, and it's affected by early experiences. The data in this chart suggests that fearful babies are not necessarily fated to remain that way. Adults can help children overcome fearfulness, but some fearful children do not change, and researchers are not sure of the influence of each nature-nurture factor. Research indicates that infants display temperament of dimensions. They refer to as effortful control which is the ability to regulate attention, negative mood, fearful, angry, and unhappy, or surgency, active, social, and not shy. According to Freud, infants first seek gratification by using the mouth, elimination, think toilet training, becomes central in the life of an infant past the first birthday. He also believed that these two first two stages were fraught with potential complications. For instance, if a mother weans an infant too early or prevents the child from sucking, the child may become distressed and anxious and eventually become an adult with an oral fixation, i.e. examples are eating, drinking, or talking too excessive. According to Erickson, if social interaction inspires trust and security, the child and later the adult will confidently explore the social world. At around 18 months, with self-awareness emerging, toddlers want to rule their own actions and bodies. With this in mind, consider why and when Erickson would advise a parent to wean a child, and in what ways Erickson's criteria would be the same or different than the criteria based on Freud. Since Bandura's experiments, developmentalists have demonstrated that social learning occurs throughout the life. Social learning theory acknowledges inborn temperament but stresses parental example, meaning that just because a child is born a specific way doesn't mean that the parent can't influence that child. So how do children learn aggression? There's an experimental group and a control group. The uh, experimental group watched a model act aggressively toward a ball, and the control group did not. 
They both experienced frustration. They were both placed in a room with a doll. The experimental group displayed highly aggressive behavior and imitated the model's action, while the control group displayed less aggression, mainly limited to punching doll with fists. <clears throat> a person might assume that other people are trustworthy and be surprised by evidence that this working model of human behavior is erroneous. According to cognitive theory, it's not necessarily a child's early experiences themselves that are crucial, but rather the child's ex interpretation of them. So if parents consistently display inconsistent responses to their one-year-old, that child may apply a model of unpredictable behavior to everyone she encounters. Her childhood friendships will be insecure. Her adult re relationships will be guarded. So something to be aware of is that the early relationships definitely shape later relationships. Early aspects of early emotional development interacts with cultural beliefs expressed in parental actions. According to ethno theory, values and practices of a culture are not usually apparent to the people within the culture. For instance, child rearing practices like breastfeeding, co sleeping, or toilet training arise from ethno theories expressed in parental actions. Through synchrony, infants learn to read others' emotions and to develop the skills of social interaction, such as taking turns and paying attention. Attachment is a tie that binds baby and caregiver together in a space and endures over time. The researcher, Mary Ainsworth, developed a laboratory procedure called the strain situation to measure attachment. The four patterns on this slide were eventually identified. Securely attached infants are more likely to become secure toddlers, socially competent preschoolers, high-achieving school children, and capable parents. Also, attachment status can shift with circumstances. So if you notice, there's four specific types of attachment. There's insecure avoidant, secure, insecure resistant, and ambivalent, and disorganized. And if you w look at the videos that go with this week's chapter, you could actually see examples of it. When social referencing the other person, the ones who is observed, becomes a social reference. Mothers use a variety of expressions, vocalizations, and gestures to convey social information to their infants. For instance, saying yummy, smacking their lips, rubbing their bellies, or pretending to eat to encourage the toddlers to eat broccoli or liver. So we're trying to model for them, and we want the child to look at us to see how we're reacting to things. A big dog comes in the room, same thing, if we act afraid of the dog, the child will actually reference that and become fearful of the dog. In center daycare, the children usually are grouped by age. The daycare center is licensed and providers are trained and certified in child development. Of course, the national differences are determined more by politics and culture than by nature of babies. In the United States, 20% of infants are cared for by the mother alone in the first year. In Canada, 70%. Evidence shows that good preschool education benefits young children, especially in cognition, but there's no consensus about daycare and infants. So we can see that, um, that it is specifically determined by country in terms of the culture of how much our, um, we use infant child care. So at this, at this point, what I would like you to do is please go into the forums and take the time to discuss uh, attachment. Thanks.